Hello, everyone. Uh, it's pleasure for me to join here today to deliver this session. I am Tushar. Uh, I currently work as a staff software engineer at Wipro.ai, and I'm going to talk about how do we enhance and process all the medical data using Neo4j. So before I dive into all the technical details, let me take a moment and talk about Wipro. So Wipro is a biointelligence platform that currently utilizes AI technologies uh, that allows to help our users to develop strategies which specifically belongs to pharmaceutical domain. So all the users that use RIA, which stands for Regulatory Intelligence Assistant, which is a great tool for research and development, they can search and collect lot of regulatory data. This tool also gives them the capability to curate the data that suits their needs. They can filter a lot of data and they can process it and they can have it ready for their presentations. On top of that, using this tool, they can also summarize and analyze a lot of complex regulatory data, which is super essential for drug development. And finally, Using all these tools and techniques, they can strategize their accelerated drug development process. In terms of data and volume, we currently have more than 2 million publicly available regulatory documents indexed and searchable in RIA. What that means is we source data from more than 50 data sources, which translates to more than six to seven regulatory agencies around the world. This includes US FDA, EMA, Australia, China, Japan, Canada, all of Europe, et cetera. And that can say that using this, you can also search for more than 250 approved drugs and biologics. So why RIA? It allows our users to have faster decisions it allows them to develop superior strategies and at a great quality. And this is not me saying, this is a real customer's testimony where a team of a dozen people, it will take around a month to develop a strategy for a drug development where they can do the same thing with RIA in few seconds. So enough about RIA, let me talk about data now. So after working for more than three years at Wipro and Pharma Domain, I can attest to this that the importance of structured data is really, really uh, crucial in Pharma Domain. Why is that? It allows us to have consistent drug classification because we source data from multiple regulatory agencies that goes over different countries they have different classification system, different registration system. So we deal with tremendous amount of unstructured data and bringing all those drugs and regulatory uh, documents and data under one umbrella, it's super challenging. Having structured data also allow, allows us to have a sufficient and enhanced data integration. That means we can have efficient regulatory compliance and at the end, it allows us to serve our users in accelerated research and development. When we talk about pharma, log pharma data, there are two important concepts. One is the ATC classification and another is mesh headings. So what are ATC classifications? So it's a therapeutic chemical classification system using which every drug that we see in the market that are approved are categorized into certain groups using the organ that they treat, using the medical conditions that they treat, and the chemical composition that they have. This ATC classification is really important to understand what the drug is, how does it perform, what all medical composition does it have. And second concept is the mesh headings. It's a medical subject headings. It's like, uh, think of it as a dictionary developed just for pharma domain or medicines or all the indications. It's characterized with different disease categories and in a different hierarchy. So why am I talking about this? So this is to 
set up a context um, for which I'm going to talk about in the future slides. These two concepts are really important. These help us to improve the search accuracy and the way we serve our users. Let me talk a little bit about ETC classification. So let's say I have a drug, a tolvaptan, which is an active ingredient. The ETC classification code for this is C03XA01. Now to anyone just looking by looking at this code, it doesn't make any sense, but it will make sense if we start breaking this ETC code into few categories. So let's start with this term C. It stands for cardiovascular system. It's the main anatomical group that this drug belongs to. Next comes the two digit code 03, which is diuretics followed by a one digit code, which is X, other diuretics and so on. If we go down to A and 01, together they form the ETC classification of the drug. It entire pretty much forms the biography of the drug, what the drug does, where does it belong, what is the categorization of the dr that drug using just digits. Next, let me talk about mesh headings. Now you see here, this is a very small subset of the mesh headings uh, that I have added here. In its entirety, total mesh headings um, database goes beyond 350,000 words, which includes hierarchy of diseases characterized by their conditions and the level of acuteness, et cetera. So for illustration purposes, I have created this tree diagram of one particular disease, diabetes mellitus. Now you see here, the diabetes mellitus can be categorized under two main parentum. One is metabolic diseases, other is endocrine diseases. And if we follow their child, terms, which is type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and so on, it follows the same hierarchy. However, there is one difference for endocrine diseases, diabetes mellitus. It also consists of diabetes complications, which further translates into angiopathies, which is further branched into diabetic foot and diabetic retinopathy. Now, why am I even talking about this? Let's say you as a user who is doing research on all the drugs that are approved for diabetes mellitus. As a user, I may just end up searching diabetes or diabetes mellitus uh, anywhere in the search platform. Now, as I talked about different regulatory agencies and bodies around the world, it's not mandated that they might use the same headings across all the documents. So if a different spelling or a different condition of the same diabetes mellitus or different child node was used, just searching diabetes mellitus won't give you that results. So that's why mesh headings are of really important. But how do we utilize this in the form of searching? That's where Neo4j comes into existence. As you saw in this tree diagram, this tree can grow pretty big with thousands and 2000 nodes per disease category. And every time a user searches for any of the nodes, our job is to identify all the siblings and the child node so that we can give, bring as much accurate data as possible. But this is not an easy task. If you have 2000 nodes per disease category, search is going to take a lot of time. So this is where we use Neo4j. It allows us to make search way faster than we could have done, and it allows us to deliver accurate results. So referring back to the ATC classification that we just talked about, let's say given a drug, tolvaptan, I want to categorize it into different, uh, I want to basically break it down into different categories. I want to understand what does that tolvaptan means, what is its anatomical group? What are the subgroup? What is the chemical composition? One way to do this is to write all the possible ATC class codes into a file and have that ready to use every time. So I want to look for ATC class code of any particular drug. 
that's super slow. That's going to be taking a lot of time every time I do the search. So what we did, we used Neo4j graph database. We indexed all the possible categories of ATC classes. So ATC classes are always divided into levels. So you see here, the orange node is always the root node, which follows the level one, followed by level two, followed by level three, level four, and level five. Level five gives us the final drug that we are interested in. So having this kind of structure allows us to traverse any data efficiently, with accuracy, and with very low latency. So I'll show you a, a small recording that I have of this uh, for the same drug. How do we classify this? So let's say we start with all the level one ATC codes, which is in this case cardiovascular system. So which stands with which starts with C, and it has around seven to eight child nodes, which will see will be sub categorized into level three, four, and five. So let's say we were looking at 12 up 10, which starts with C. It's a cardiovascular system. Next, the child node will be diuretics that we just saw. This now belongs to level two, which is the code, which has the code zero three. Next, as we go further down to level third of that particular ATC code, which is other diuretics, which is C03X. Now we have already traversed three levels of this ATC code. Going further down, we'll have a subgroup of that particular drug, which is now at the level four, as you saw, as you see here, C03XA. And similarly, going to the level five, gives me the final drug that I was interested in. So finally going with the ATC code of C03XA01. So this allows us allows me to linearly iterate through all the nodes and identify or classify any drug into its ATC codes. Next, let me do the same thing with the mesh headings that we just talked about. So this is the same disease that we just talked about, diabetes mellitus, the tree structure that I showed you. Iterating that tree in a graph, it makes the search way much faster. So again, here, if we start with the root node, which is diabetes mellitus, it transports down into diabetic complication, which further has diabetic angiopathies, diabetic neuropathy, diabetic food, diabetic retinopathy. So taking any drug that user has entered as a search term, we can iterate through any node and generate all the possible combinations, or I would say synonyms in this case, of that particular drug. Meaning just giving me diabetes mellitus, I can say that all these terms or any drug which is approved for the treatment of any of these diseases is directly related to diabetes mellitus. Now, this looks scary. This is the same tree that I saw, I showed you for diabetes mellitus, but this time it's done for the nervous system diseases, which is a very high level, very parent term for a disease. As you see here, I might have started somewhere in the middle node. And as I keep expanding the child, uh, the child nodes, we get more and more terms. All the yellow nodes that we see are the child nodes. There won't be any more um, trees or the words related to those. However, all the blue nodes that we see, there are potentially more words that we can explore. So what does this mean? This means that every time a user searches for nervous system diseases, it will incorporate all these words, which I think goes to 2,500 synonyms and it will give you all the drugs that relates to nervous system diseases. So that's it uh, from my end. So this is how we are currently enhancing and processing medical data using Neo4j. Any questions?